Good day and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial video, we'll be looking at panel data analysis uh, with system jamming. Uh, before we go into the uh, practical session of this, I'd like to take you through the basics of uh, system jamming. System jamming is another notable estimator for dynamic panel data model, and it was introduced by Blundell and Bond in 1990. At its, it is adjudged an improvement over the standard uh, difference GMM estimator because it, it chooses both level and difference equation in its estimation of parameter. By level equation, we mean the original equation. Okay? Level equation is all we have in equation 1 here, yeah. and difference equation is all we have in equation 2 here. Yeah. And uh, we have two types of uh, system GMM. We have the, uh, the one step system GMM. And the two step system gym one step system gym and the two step system gym for the sake of this uh, tutorial video we will look at the one step system gym but the, there are certain things you need to look out for when you're using a uh, system gym okay that uh, validate the estimated model just like uh, we have for difference gym we have the autocorrelation test then we have the instrument validity test okay these tests are very important to validate uh, uh, the the uh, GMM estimated result okay for autocorrelation test because of the uh, the inherent characteristics of a dynamic model we expect that we reject no life hypothesis of no autocorrelation for AR1 we expect AR1 to be present in the model but AR2 we expect it not to be present. So for AR1, we reject null hypothesis of no autocorrelation. And for that's for AR1. For AR2, we accept no hypothesis of uh, no autocorrelation in the model. Then instrument validity. We have two tests for this. We have the Sagan test and we have the uh, Hansen test. Okay? And we expect to accept the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis for this test is that the instruments are valid. Okay? So these two tests are very, very important. Uh, to validate the uh, the authenticity of the estimated model okay now we the model we want to for the sake of this tutorial we are going to estimate this model investment is going to be the dependent variable while share and face capital are going to be the independent variable okay and now we're going to run three we're going to simulate three models we're going to look at one with no lags and see how the result looks like uh one with lags Okay, and then the other one we see how can we manipulate this model to get our desired uh, our desired result. Okay, so uh now let's go to the data. This is data for thing. Okay, I have my data in state already. Uh if you do not know how to bring in data into state, I please refer to my first video on introduction to panel uh, introduction to state. Uh uh, right now, before you can do any analysis with this data, you need to uh, declare your variable as panel data. How would you do that? Let's just set cross ID and year. Okay. This cross ID, I use cross ID because that is what I used to identify the unique characteristics of each of this cross section. Uh, each of the cross section I have in the model. So you click on enter. You see panel variable, cross ID strongly balanced okay now uh for system driven i'm going to be using a stubborn two estimator and it does not readily come with the uh the software so you have to install it okay that is they are doing this for the first time you need to install it in the software and how do you install it you just type ssc install a stubborn two a stubborn two just click on enter. Make sure you are connected. Uh, connected to the internet. Okay, you have it installed for you. I have it on the system already, so there will be no need for that. Now we can now go into our simulation proper. But before I go, there, I would like to transform my variable. Transform it to log form. Okay, that it works in giving it a fairly decent result. So mm, I'm gonna copy this code and then now bring it to data. What this basically says is that log investment and give it the name you invest, okay? Log share and give it the name. Then share. So click on enter. I have them generated already. We come to this uh, variable 
our session you see linear vs have been generated already so we can start with our simulation so i'm just going to copy the first one with no lag option let's see what we have as the results okay we have a stubborn two destinator yeah the dependent variable the lag of dependent variable the independent variable robust no matter this IVD are instrument of variable and these are strictly exogenous variable of the model. This GMM is they are uh, instrument variable for endogenous variable. These are endogenous, okay. Uh, and then uh, we have collapse. The collapse here is just to uh, reduce the number of instruments we have in the model. So you click on enter and then we have our results. Okay, first of all, let's say number of instruments 22, number of group 10. This is not really good. We expect that uh, the number of instruments be less than the number of group. Okay, but let's come down and look at our post estimation result. You see, AR1, see, AR2 doesn't look really good. Okay, we couldn't reject null hypothesis here, and we could not accept null hypothesis here. It's not a good result, and we could not accept our uh, null hypothesis for second there. So this is not uh, a good model. Okay, let's see with lag. How would the result look like when we have lags in the model? So we have lag. What we, the difference? The difference between the first and the first simulation and this one is inclusion of the lag we click on enter okay what do we have hmm. the variables here are pretty statistically significant but let's see what do we have with these four you see uh this is still not good okay although we could project null hypothesis at 10 percent here but we couldn't accept it here okay and then the second test is not now go we could not accept null hypothesis okay but it presents a better result than than when there's no lag one thing we lag is that it helps to uh avoid the problem of instrument proliferation in the model when we have too much instrument in the model okay let's come here and see how many number of instruments we have we have nine okay it's less than number of groups so it's good but still the result is not it's not good enough okay, what can we do let's look at the third simulation okay i'm able to come up with this because i have done some rough simulations in them about this model now when we have this problem we could not get the uh, the uh standard ar1 and ar2 on your instrument are not valid what you could do is that you could either increase the dynamism of the model or you try to change the position of the instrumental variables okay those variables you consider as strictly exogenous might not be strictly exogenous. So you might try instrumenting them in the GMM uh, session. So let's see. So what I did is that uh, I tried to instrument face capital in GMM session. I felt like it might not be strictly exogenous because this is face capital, face capital investment. Yeah, it might not be. And then I tried to increase the dynamism here. I use lab 2 okay dynamism of the model so uh, let me add lab 2 here this is increasing the dynamism of the model in invest okay let's see what we have okay mm. okay 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 look at what we have here now we can uh as reject no like no hypothesis for ar1 conveniently and then we can accept no hypothesis for ar2 comfortably we can accept no hypothesis for both sagan and hansen test so most time we find it difficult to uh, get the required result for the uh what do you call it a post estimation test in here one here two of the instrument validity test okay when we are in this situation we could either increase the dynamism of the model what i did was i increased the dynamism okay instead of lagging it by one i lag it by two 
Okay, and then I try to instrument. Uh, I look at the IV session, the strictly uh, exogenous uh, variable instrument session. It is very possible that this these variables are not strictly exogenous. So I try to instrument them in the GM color. So I move away, face capital from IV, and then I bring it to what to the GM uh, session. Okay, uh, and then I try to increase the lag again. I put it into two so you can manipulate we can manipulate the model and see okay just walk around it do different simulation and you will get the the, the the right result okay try a different lag option okay this lag helps a lot okay you have seen the quality of your results okay and uh uh so that that is that with a one step just system german uh by default when you estimate a uh, system german you are estimating a uh, one step system gen rather so system gen by default is one step okay if you want two step then you have to specify it in the code okay that you want two step system gen so this is one step system gen okay uh uh so 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 that is that if you have any any question any comment or any that just you drop it down below okay and uh, if you are visiting this channel for the first time please I will appreciate if you could click on the subscribe button, like, and share with friends and colleagues. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.